The Miami Dolphins squandered a strong offensive performance in the second half with a last-minute loss to the Buffalo Bills. We're talking about it here today on our weekly Monday therapy session on Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami. Welcome to another Monday episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting, author of Touchdown Miami on Substack, and the NFL Draft Lead for the 33rd team. I want to give a shout out to our everydayers, especially those of you who tune in on the heels of a game like that, a heartbreaker. You are the true every day. There's a tip of the cap to you. Today's episode of Locked on Dolphins is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, visit FanDuel.com to get started. It's been that kind of year, right? (laughs) Uh, The Dolphins' last gasp effort to inject some enthusiasm into this season and and a potential climb back to three and five. And then you'd have extra rest to go to Monday night football and play the Rams. And then you're back at home with, nope, forget it. You're two and six dolphins walked off, uh, not walked off, but effectively walked off by a 61 yard (laughs) Tyler Bass field goal. And I'm laughing because it's the only thing you can do, right? It is the only thing you can do in a game in which you won effectively all the measurables, all of the measured um, punch marks in a recipe to victory. You won the time of possession battle. You won the uh, red zone efficiency, three for four in trips to the red zone versus two of five for Buffalo. Uh, You did not lose the turnover battle, although we will talk about Raheem Mostert and the fumbling issue that's now popped up twice for Raheem Mostert. Uh, You saw less third downs, but you were 50% on third down, plus the one for one on fourth down. You had more first downs in the game. You had more yards in the game. You were able to successfully string together, impressively, I might add, a number of long, sustained drives, 14 plays, 97-yard touchdown drive, nine plays, 65 yards, fizzles out, just short of the end zone for a 23-yard field goal that, of course, uh, is a big piece of the puzzle on why you lost football game. He settled for three versus six there. Nine play, 65-yard there. Uh, And then in the fourth quarter, nine plays, 70 yards, and 11 plays, 81 yards, two touchdown drives in the fourth quarter uh, to draw back to even twice. You get them to third and long. You false start by Chop Robinson. And then Jordan Poyer uh, put him up in the Bills' ring of honor tomorrow. As far as I'm concerned, um, the the unnecessary roughness penalty that extends this drive, Miami looking at with a minute left and two timeouts, getting the ball back. Jordan Poyer with a personal foul, 15 yards, fresh set of downs. Bills fizzle out again near midfield. Tyler Bass doesn't matter. Probably would have been good from 70 with how he kicked it. It was an awesome kick. Tip of the cap to Buffalo. Uh, tip of the cap to the Bills uh, for a... a classic in this rivalry that is feeling less like a rivalry because it's been so one-sided recently, but a very memorable game, memorable game. And I I remember thinking to myself about midway through the fourth quarter, but where has this version of the team been? Now the team's defense was bad. You gave up 24 points in the, in the second half. And some of that to me just comes back to, I, you don't have enough, right? You're missing three, fourths of your best defensive line that you could field if everybody was healthy. You're missing 40% of your starting secondary with Cater Kohu and Javon Holland. And those things show up because Marcus May has an open field opportunity to try to tackle Ray Davis on a a bust for a long touchdown score of 63 yards. Uh, And and then, you know, that you have multiple opportunities on the edge to make plays and get the quarterback down and you don't do it. So um, as the story goes. Right. And it's just been that kind of season. And I don't want to. I think there's a lot of good individual performances to take away from this game. And that's really what this season's about right now. Anyway, is you're playing for pride. And I'll wake up tomorrow and, and you know, I'll 
be annoyed that the Dolphins lost another football game that, that was within reach for them to execute at the end and not shoot themselves directly in the foot. Um, and I'll be annoyed, but I, I won't be ashamed. And there's been games this season where I've been ashamed to think about putting on anything Dolphins affiliated on a Monday morning. I won't feel that tomorrow. The record sucks. The season sucks, really. But if we're playing for pride, um, this was a game that I, I reflect on the performance of a number of especially important individuals with the team, and I respect some of the effort that was put forth. Um, there's a big-picture conversation about what this season looks like from here. Uh, we saw our first bit of public accountability, as far as I'm concerned, and I, I said this on Touchdown Miami with Substack, uh, where I do the offensive and defensive grading. I watch and grade every player on a plus or minus uh, scale on every play that they play. David Long last week played the worst game any Miami Dolphins player has played all season long, and he played all but one snap. He got benched today for Anthony Walker. Bravo. I, I, a, a visible sign of accountability for a performance that, simply put, is not good enough. I applaud that. And I would challenge the Dolphins to do it again next week. You're two and six. The season story is effectively written. We'll see if you sell at the trade deadline. I would cut Jordan Poyer tomorrow. That's how bad of a play that was in that moment to get into the face of Keon Coleman for a 15-yard penalty to take away a punt and an opportunity to win the football game with two timeouts. You had him backed up. I'd say I'd, I'd say ramifications for Chop for going from third and 14 to third and nine, but the he was the reason you were in third and 14 and you don't have the bodies on the edge anyway. Oh, you got Elijah Campbell. Who's back on a short-term deal. Marcus May's obviously already playing. Hopefully we see Javon Holland again sooner rather than later. Um, I don't need to see any more of long-term veteran Jordan Poyer in this Dolphin secondary when he has missed opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to make a game changing play in games that the Dolphins have lost this season. And Jordan Poirier is not like the exclusive reason that the Dolphins lost the football game. But man, you want to talk about just giving it away in that individual moment. I don't care how long Mike McDaniel's been buddies with him going back to Cleveland or this, that, or the other thing or whatever was promised in the offseason to come in here and be a starter, even though I think Marcus Mays outplayed him all season with every opportunity that he's had. Um, it, it does nothing for you big picture-wise. You've been stringing along this Elijah Campbell investment for years as a special teams guy who's kind of dabbled in defense and looked good in camp, but it hasn't happened. That's where I'm at. Playing Jordan Boy the rest of the, the, the season does nothing for a 2-6 and six football team, especially making back-breaking mistakes like that. So that's my challenge to the Dolphins coming out of this game. I applaud them, and I applaud the staff for sitting down David Long with how he played last week. Do it with Jordan Poyer now. Because as bad as David played, the individual play that Jordan Poyer made there in that moment, in the final minute of that football game with the Dolphins poised to get the ball back and force a punt, you got Josh Allen, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and you get him backed up and you, you, you force an incompletion, you, t you get a sack in that moment, and you give him a second chance, and they make you pay. That's my challenge to the Dolphins on the heels of this game, and I hope they do. I hope they seriously consider it. But uh, there were other mistakes to be found in this football game, including another veteran player that as we move and press forward from here, uh, I think the Dolphins should seriously reassess his, his standing within his position. We'll get into that in addition to uh, some defensive performances, the defense in the second half. We're, we'll get in a little bit of that next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. Stick with us. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually resolved for high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold can earn a very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhoodgold.com, Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms do apply for 
product specific disclosures, visit robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold LLC. If you're looking to stay in the action, uh, we only get football so often, but there's college games, there's basketball games, uh, there's NHL games, price picks. Nice way for you to get some action any day of the week. Price picks the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions in awarded winnings. Price picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible. It's all you just pick more or less than at least at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long with prize picks. Uh, prize picks they have an insurance policy, so if one of your picks goes down in the first half of the game and does not return, prize picks keeps your lineup live. And the best thing about prize picks it is you versus the house, not you versus the numbers. You're not playing against those 10 million active users, it's just you versus the more or less projections on prize picks that you pick. Sign up today and get $50, $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts. Uh, so run your game all season long over at Price Picks. Download the Price Picks app today and use code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. That's download the app Prize Picks today. Use code locked on NFL and get that $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price Picks, run your game. Bills defense ran their game in the second half here. Uh, 11 plays, 64 yards for Buffalo. And then they went two plays, 70 yards uh, with a quick strike after that. 10 plays, 70 yards. And then nine plays, 27 yards on that 60, 61 yard walk off field goal. Not walk off field goal, but five seconds left. Uh, a week after getting walked off on a field goal by the Arizona Cardinals. Man, when it rains, it pours. Um, and defensively, the, the takeaway that I have from this is, is, and we alluded to it already, you, you just don't have your horses really rolling and you were going to need some Herculean effort from someone to, to do the job and, and to get it done. And you were right there. And, and there were a number of performers that I thought, played admirably in this game. Deshaun Hand popped to me in, in more ways than one. And almost, he got the hand up on the second second and long in that final possession and almost tracked that ball down for an interception that which would have set you up in the final minute inside the red zone. Um, like that you were you were that close. Now, of course, it didn't get done. But got, young guys like Deshaun Hand, especially with a report coming out from Diana Rossini of The Athletic uh, over the weekend, the teams have been calling, inquiring about Calais Campbell in the trade deadline. And if that if that's true, and the team chooses to go that route and trade Calais Campbell ahead of the trade deadline, um, things have the potential to get very ugly for you up front. Now, Deshaun Hand's been a, a solid contributor to your football team. He's made some nice plays. He's, he's definitively been your third best interior defensive lineman. The problem is you don't have Zach Sealer who is out with a fractured orbital bone in his eye from a uh, mishap at practice. And it's, it's cost you the last two weeks. And I'll say this, if you have Zach, I feel pretty good about you getting some stops on some of the chunk plays that you gave up running the ball with your rush defense uh, that directly contributed to you losing the last two football games. But of course, a, a Wednesday or Thursday practice mishap yields losing your best defensive lineman or, or at least your second best defensive lineman for the last two weeks when you needed it most. Uh, the Bills finished uh, with 19 rushes for 94 yards. Uh, Josh Allen, two of seven, had a couple of big runs called back. Um, Manuel Agba had a nice play. And I mentioned this in real time, but the, the Bills tried to run a, a QB sweep uh, on a third down situation. And it was the same type of concept where the wide receiver is in a reduced split. He tries to pin the defensive end and the quarterback runs around it. Arizona ran that play on the third down to set up the game winning field goal last week. And on that play, they pinned Emmanuel Agba. And I said, Emmanuel Agba got penetration, but he got absolutely no width to help widen and force the quarterback to continue to string it out against Arizona. And that was the criticism that I had for uh, Emmanuel Agbo on that rep. He comes back this week. They run it. 
and he gets some width and he actually makes the tackle. And like the little victories like that, that's that's where I'm willing to uh, live as these games happen because these these games are going to be played, right? You're you've got nine games left. They're going to play the games. We're not just going to sit here and sim to end and cancel the season as much as I would like to because like your expectations for this season are, are now all but not. You've lost as many football games at the midway point as you did all year last year. It's not a good feeling. And the way in which you've lost the last two, um, you're, you're one bounce of the ball in each of those two games away from being four and four. Don't lie to yourself, though. There are fundamental flaws with the team. You have young players who are not playing in favor of old players. and. Uh, I don't know. Can you, can you figure out if Nick Needham and I generally know what Nick Needham is, but like Nick Needham and Elijah Campbell in the secondary. And I'm glad we're at least seeing Cam Smith play, even though Cam Smith's out here holding guys out the wazoo and getting popped for flags. I thought Cam Smith made a nice play on Keon Coleman down the field on that play that Jordan Poyer came in there and popped him in the face. These are really important reps. And, you know, K- Cater Kohu coming back um, with whatever his neck issue is uh, will, will certainly help the the chemistry of the secondary. But, like, Cam Smith's a guy that should play. you got to figure out what you have. You've got all these guys that you backburnered and developed and drafted ahead of needs, and we talked about it last week for investments and where the investments have been and, and those guys not playing for you, and then you're thin in other spots. Like it's it's time to have the hard pill to swallow conversation if you're inside the building, right? And I, I think that's the thing. Um, a lot of fans have known it for a while because the season got crazy right off the bat. You know, well, some off-season stuff, and then the Tyreek traffic incident week one, and then the Tua concussion week two, and Skyler going down week three, and it's just been, and then the Zach Sealer injury, and it's just been like thing after thing after thing that had been weird. And Dolphins fans are like, it's that kind of year. It's been that kind of year. I don't, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I, I am wearing my 08 division champion sweatshirt. Um, <laughs> we'll have to wait another year until perhaps the next one. But, um, yeah, de- defensively, you you just did not have the horses that you need. You can't you can't have Kohu and Holland and Sealer and Phillips and Chubb. I mean, realistically, those are at least four of those guys are probably four of your top six players on your defensive depth chart. And injuries are not an excuse, right? Ultimately, at the end, the injuries are not an excuse. It's not good enough. The defense today was not good enough. And there were avoidable mishaps like letting Ray Davis catch a 63 yard touchdown catch and run out of the backfield. Because I don't care if he was blitzed, and I don't care if there was a rub with a shallow underneath and the linebacker gets picked off. You're Marcus May in that moment. You got to make that tackle. You're, you're a, a defender with Josh Allen potentially in your grasp. You got to get him on the ground. Oh, and that that's what makes Josh Allen so difficult to defend and play against. And, and kudos to him and, and credit to the Bills. They made the plays that they needed to. And then you uh, squarely put, took off your, your boot, held your foot up in the air, and shot yourself in it in the final minute of the game. Sucks. It's not fun. Um, but there were some bright spots, defensive or offensively. Uh, Chop Robinson got a sack. Chop Robinson active around the ball. And I know that's kind of eye roll inducing because it's like, yeah, dude, you've been doing that for eight weeks now, nine weeks now, eight weeks with a bye. Um, But making the play on, on, on the final possession, it's a nice, cool moment for him. Emmanuel Ogba making that play. That's a nice, cool moment. I appreciate the accountability for saving, sitting David Long down defensively. Um, Cam Smith had a nice play in that moment that Jordan Poyer spoiled. Uh, so there were some, some nice individual moments and, and I'm hoarding those because that's, what's going to keep me sane each week with outcomes like this. <laughs> uh, but offensively, I have a take, I have a hot take. And I'm going to give it to you right after the break. Make sure you stick with us. 
Time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it doom scrolling on Dolphin's Twitter. History, economics, the history of and the great works of literature. If you studied these things in school, great. But if you didn't, now's the time to invest your time into yourself. Our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free, online courses, including Constitution 101, the meaning and history of the Constitution, Introduction to Free Market Economics, the Rise and Fall of the Roman, M Roman Republic, and more. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you could start whenever, tune in wherever, and you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or you can just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register, register hillsdale.edu slash locked on. Get ready to tackle NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win your first bet. FanDuel Sportsbook Act gives you everything you need to place live bets in the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you get to check out the latest stats, few live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page as where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Uh, right now. Uh, I am looking at Monday Night Football Chiefs hosting the Bucks, favored by nine and a half points. It's a big spread. Uh, I'm maybe interested in the game total at 45 and a half. Tampa, obviously, without Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, is kind of like a weird limbo. Do you do do you trust? I mean, Tampa's defense has struggled this year, but Kansas City offensively has been kind of I don't want to say putrid, but like just. They're just kind of floating along until it's time to flip the switch because that's what the Chiefs do. But Chiefs favorite at home by nine and a half points tomorrow night on Monday Night Football. If that wets your whistle, it's FanDuel.com. Uh, you never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. My take is uh, Tua Tungvaloa played one of the better games he has played as a member of the Miami Dolphins against Buffalo. Um, and that's not just like against Buffalo. That's Tua Tungvaloa played one of the better games he has played in his NFL career today or earlier today or yesterday, depending on when you listen to the show. Uh, 25 of 28 in the game, uh, 200 and it would have been 55 yards, but they lost 24 yards on the final play from scrimmage. And that took Jalen Waddle to <laughs> minus four yards. <laughs> Um, so they obviously lost a lot of yardage on that play. Two touchdowns was sacked once, had the scramble on the fourth down for conversion. We'll talk about it. Don't worry. Um, and yes, I understand he had Tyreek Hill on the play on the drive in which they kind of stalled out in the red zone and had an opportunity where if he let it out in front of him, he could score. Uh, but based on the leverage of Damar Hamlin on the play, who was the safety over the top that was working over the top, like I get why he left it short and let Tyreek make an adjustment to the ball. Um, I know Tua did drop the snap from from Aaron Brewer. I know that was the big thing. Everybody was debating the big thing last week was the snap from Brewer um, against the Cardinals, and um, that, that led to the safety. And this was not ambiguous at all. It was Tua just had his eyes up. It looked like they were running a stick nod with Waddle to get up the seam, and it looked like it was going to be open, uh, but he had his eyes up too fast and dropped the football. So that's a bummer. Um, but as far as decision-making crispness, I thought from a game plan perspective, the Dolphins, they ran 31 times for 149 yards, 4.8 yards per carry. Um, the discipline of the game plan and not chasing explosive plays and embracing kind of the West Coast offense find easy completions, uh, take what the defense gives you, like, that's one of those little victories that I'm going to sit here and I'm going to collect and, and create my little hodgepodge of like moral victory awards to kind of look at and, and, and sort through. And Tua, I thought, was excellent in, in the execution of that today. And case in point, he led two fourth quarter game tying drives and was just begging the defense to give him an opportunity to get him the ball back so he could go in position to win the football game. This one's squarely not on the offense. Uh, just like the one last week was really not on the offense. There were missed opportunities in both games, sure. But Tua was sharp. Uh, Tua made the good decision. It doesn't mean it didn't scare the hell out of me. But Tua on the fourth down does scramble, dive headfirst into space, not try to run somebody over. 
round of applause, a little more victories that we're going to put up on the shelf and collect and look at. Um, and, and played played some of the best football of his career. But it wasn't all good for the Dolphins' offense. And I'm going to talk about Raheem Mostert. Raheem played inspired early in this game. Uh, but for the second time in three weeks, Raheem Mostert has put the ball on the ground with the Dolphins moving the football with a lead. And it has directly yielded points for an opposing team starting on a short field off of a Raheem Mostert fumble. And I know the Dolphins did the thing with Raheem's contract over the offseason and put an extra year behind it so it wasn't going into a contract year. But Raheem Mostert's a 10-year veteran player. And you got a log jam so deep at running back that you got Devon A. Chan, who got good run. He got 20 touches in this game. You got Jalen Wright, who got six carries. Round of applause there. Only had 18 yards, but had, had a big loss run in there. Had a couple of nice runs where he pressed outside and had to stick his foot in the ground to get north and have a cutback lane. Um, it's it's the equivalency of of the Jordan Poyer thing on the defensive side of the ball. You're two and six. You used a third round pick next year on a running back who's barely getting any run. And I know Devon A. Chan is your primary back right now. And Devon A. Chan, I thought, played a good game. I thought he ran hard. I think he ran harder than he did early in the season. Um, Obviously, the involvement in the passing game, eight receptions for 58 yards and the touchdown that he had, he did, was caught all eight of his targets in this game. Uh, like, you have the future at certain positions. And uh, as, as good as Raheem Mostert has been and as good as he was last year, and as much as I respect him as a leader of this football team, these back-breaking mistakes have cost you directly and yielded points and taken points off the field, at least today, because you you were moving. You had a chance to make it potentially a two-score game if you go down and score a touchdown. And instead, we get out on the edge and we're ditzing around not covering the football, we put the ball on the ground, and Buffalo gets it. It kills a drive. They go down, they score a touchdown, take a lead. Backbreaking mistakes. Can't happen. It can't happen. And I appreciate Raheem Mostert effectively being sat down from that moment on. It should continue. And based off the economics of Raheem Mostert's contract, like I'd probably be looking at how much can I trust Devon HN and, and Jalen Wright and – I'm not saying bench Raheem Mostert to and leave him in, inactive on game days, and he could be a part of the offensive game plan. But like Raheem, you got to pick your spots now. And, and for next game against the Rams, like I probably would sit him. He dress, but like you got to stew in a little bit because you did the same thing two weeks ago, and it's it's cost you two football games, and that sucks because uh, Raheem's a good player. He's a great player. Uh, but as a 10-year veteran for a team that now is halfway through the season, needs to make a decision on whether or not they're going to sell at the deadline, um, I would be interested in getting these young guys the ball and make sure I know what I have going into the offseason. And that's an unfortunate reality of where the Dolphins stand because they've done the thing they did today all season long. And that's a microcosm of, of some of the issues that I know a lot of people take exception to. I, I thought this was the best effort in a lot of ways the Dolphins gave you all season. But even in the midst of that, they were sloppy at times and they shot themselves in the foot. Again and again and again. And a lack of attention to detail. They said the Dolphins have fumbled the ball seven times in the last three games. Seven fumbles in three games. Jeez Louise. The basics, ball security and tackling, story of the game on either side of the of the football for the Dolphins in this game. And that sucks because, again, there's a lot of good, and this was a winnable football game that you did not win because of those things and common sense in the case of Jordan Poyer. We got to wait an extra day until Miami's next game. They play the Rams on Monday Night Football. Oh boy, a primetime game. They always play well in those. Uh, so we'll see what they have. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's going to do it for us here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. 27 points in consecutive weeks for the Miami Dolphins offense after the putrid start. For the second straight week, the op opposition scored more than 27. Two and six Miami Dolphins at the midway point there. Last gasp. Try to inject some life into this season. 
falls short as Tyler Bass's kick lands long past the uprights. Uh, Dolphins falling in Orchard Park. 30-27. I'm Kyle Krabs, your host here on Locked on Dolphins. It's your team every day. Appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your Monday, Sunday, whenever you caught the show. And I'll be back to talk to you all again soon.